Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, fourth-year quarterback Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee Titans take on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. So with that, let's head over to the heart of Texas, massive AT&T Stadium in Arlington. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up with Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? This one taken from the center. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by their fourth-year quarterback from Oregon, Marcus Mariota. The numbers in 2017, not what anyone expected. 13 touchdowns, the 15 interceptions, although he did lead the Titans to the playoffs for the first time in a decade and then led them to a huge upset victory in Kansas City in the wild card round. First down, over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches, what do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Hey, 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 hey. Seven, two, eight. Deion Lewis, a first carry for the expatriate. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. I think most people locked in on Byron Jones when he came out of UConn at the NFL Combine where he darn near jumped out of the stadium because of his vertical leap. But there's so much more to his game than that. Played cornerback and safety in college, and they can use that same ability to move him around in the NFL in order to create great matchups on defense for Dallas. Second down, Mariota. Blitz coming and down he goes. Jalen Smith coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. 
And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be brought out by their 24-year-old quarterback in his third year now at the helm of the Cowboys, Dak Prescott. The numbers he put up as a rookie, outstanding. But were they really, truly sustainable? Remember, they were 13-3 and his rookie season. They ended up going 9-7 in 2017. How about they went from four interceptions in 2016 as a rookie to 13 his second year? These are numbers that you didn't expect to stay the same, but I do expect Dak Prescott to continue to get better and better as a quarterback in the NFL. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of this caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. On second down, Elliott. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And that is incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary, incomplete pass. One of these quarterbacks going to learn, you don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. With it is Jackson. 12 yards on the return that time, and it'll be Titan football. Tennessee Titans coming back out here to get the possession and you know they fell under 500 at three and four with that loss to the Chargers in London Charles but it was how that game ended that was so interesting they went for two to try to win it they certainly did and that was a little bit of a surprise because they kicked the extra point you get into overtime and then you've got a better chance of maybe establishing field position and possibly taking the ball down and scoring but head coach decided let's do this right now maybe because until they scored in the third quarter They've gone 10 quarters without scoring a touchdown. So I think maybe he's trying to kickstart the team totally and make it a one-play shot in order to win. And remember, they were 3-1, and one, now 3-4, and four, heading into their open week. They run. This is Lewis. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Jeff Heath, the one to bring him down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. the play fake Mariota pass incomplete and the tight end Luke Stocker was the target and now it's third down when I watched that play I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past the biggest teaching point get your head around locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air that's exactly what he did there that was nice
So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Ball start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. He sets to fire deep. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Possession going back over to Dallas here, a team who lost last week to Washington 20 to 17, and that was on the heels of that week six blowout win they had over Jacksonville 40 to seven. But that, that loss against Washington, the field goal hitting off the upright after the penalty, a tough one to swallow. It certainly was because it became a 52 yard field goal attempt for Brett Maher. Should have been 47. And ends up doinking it off the cross, oh, excuse me, the upright, not the crossbar. And Dak Prescott, he had been 4 0 against Washington in his short career prior to Sunday's loss. A tough game for him as well. They'll start the drive with Elliott. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Second and nine now from the 21. Prescott now on second down. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Dallas first down. Prescott hooking up with Beasley. So from the 36 now, first and 10. A first down carry by Elliott. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now Prescott, and his throw's going to be incomplete. Cooper was the target there, and it's third down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Yeah. 
They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the Titans getting set to go. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Mariota now. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands. Guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. A second down throw here for Mariota. And that's incomplete. John U. Smith, the tight end, is intended receiver. And it's third down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, Mariota. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at the 20. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. Ball start, offense. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. Still and first down. oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. They go play action here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Prescott to throw it. 
And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. He's going to go deep for Beasley. He's got a man complete. And they do finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 41. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now a handoff, running off tackle right. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. A second down throw for Prescott. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. Throwing, Prescott. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. First opportunity in the red zone for the Cowboys. They're looking at a first and goal from about the nine. Now Elliott. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Second down, Prescott. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Wesley Woodyard. Not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. Looking to throw. Prescott. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. In for the score. And the Cowboys have taken the early lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. No going for two. They'll kick the point after.
point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's capped off for the Cowboys touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Titans now. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Play fake, Mariota. But it's caught on the right side of Smith. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. This is Lewis. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A first down throw for Mariota. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Arlington in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Titans with a football here to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. Case the spin, but couldn't do much else as he's wrangled down. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be a third and about 13. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Titans on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is going to be third and 13. Now Mariota. And that is incomplete. Well, touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Here's Brett Kern now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here's Austin. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They start on the ground with Elliott. Oh, he's got a little daylight. He finds an opening past the 40. And he'll cut it out to the sideline. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Right back to him on first down. And he'll get three up to midfield. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Prescott now from the 50. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. We've got a second here. Let's take a peek around the league, what's coming up week eight. A couple big games as we near the halfway point of the season, Charles. I'm mainly looking at uh, Philly and Jacksonville and London, and then New Orleans and Minnesota. That should be interesting. Yeah, you're exactly right. Philly and Jacksonville, both teams struggling right now. The Eagles have already lost four games. They lost three all of last season. Both of those teams need a win in a big way. New Orleans at Minnesota, the Saints are on a heck of a roll right now. They've won five in a row. But the Vikings quietly have won three straight and seem to be getting their footing on defense again. And how about Green Bay? They had the week off this past week. Big win over San Francisco at home on a Monday night. They now head out to face the 7-0 Rams in Los Angeles. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that one. That is a big one indeed. Aaron Rodgers, Todd Gurley, let's do this. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Following the interception here, Mariota dumps it off to Lewis. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Throwing is Mariota. 
Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tajay Sharp, the intended target, and it's third down. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Third and long here for Mariota. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly. Just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On third down, it's Prescott. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. And he puts a little something extra into this one. By far his best of the night. Here's Jackson. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Mariota now on second down. And he will go down. Cowboys sack. 
Randy Gregory in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Brett Kern now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Seven yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Prescott from the gun. On the left side, he finds Beasley. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A really nice gain of 25 yards. from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. The give is to Elliott. Who with a juke. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on run downs. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Second down, and Beasley with it over the middle. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Scott now just six of 15 through the air not good but first and ten here a give to Elliott so a good spin move there before he's taken down a nice little game nine yards is the pick up there and they'll have a second and one this drive is turning to an extended one and and the guy carrying the ball He's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Go. 
to throw is Prescott. He hits Beasley right side. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. He's got the first down. He's got a big game going right now. Already over 100 yards receiving in this first half alone. Just get the playoff. Now Prescott. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Buying time to his left. And avoids the contact by sliding. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. The Cowboys on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. Now Prescott. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but Let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. What, he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. And forthcoming, a field goal try for the Cowboys. Kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Time to look now with our spotlight at the quarterback, Marcus Mariota. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They start the drive on the ground with Lewis. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. 
Play action now, Mariota. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. On third down, it's Lewis. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line, linebackers really work well together. Here's Brett Kern now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while well, your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, That'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, because he's looked pretty good to this point. And now on the pitch, the ball's loose. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. field position there a nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage Flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. From the red zone now, Prescott, his throw incomplete. Jeff Swain, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw into the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Wesley Woodyard in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Hey, hey, hey. 
They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. Throwing Prescott, and this is going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown, out of his reach, and incomplete. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And his kick is indeed good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. First down, Mariota. Smith catches left side. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Uh, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Second down, Mariota. Incomplete. Anthony Brown right there to knock it away. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Third and short yardage, Mariota, and that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. <laughs> Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Three down, three down. There you go. Line now Elliott. And he'll lose yardage here. Back to the 15. 
It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. So we have come to halftime here in Dallas with the Cowboys out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. In the game you're watching, you've seen a strong first half out of Dak Prescott. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. Set to return now, here's Deontay Thompson. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Second half starts with a carry by Elliott, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. He gets them a little over half of what they need, and now they're looking at a third and five. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. Prescott to throw it. And he's got it to Hearns. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brian Arakpo coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Prescott now. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The Cowboys on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and 15. Looking to throw, Prescott. And he's got some space here. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, set this one off target. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. A first down throw for Mariota. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Well, CD taking a peek at some of the injuries from around the league in week seven. We did have a few. Quan Alexander on that Bucks defense went down with an injury. They'll be monitoring Sony Michelle in New England. Now, remember, they already lost Jeremy Hill, Rex Burkhead out of that backfield. So a couple injuries to note. Certainly, and Quan Alexander in the middle of the Tampa Bay defense, which was already struggling. They may not get him back the rest of the season. Sony Michelle, they're hoping to get him back after a few weeks. Albert Wilson in Miami has made big plays all season long, has a hip injury. That could cost him some serious time, if not the season. LaShawn McCoy, Melvin uh -huh. Gordon, they're hoping to get them back in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, interesting that they won without Melvin Gordon last week. That was a big win. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On third down, Mariota. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Randy Gregory in there to get him for his second sack of the night. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive linemen across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. Spinning away. The legal block in the back. Return team. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards.
So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Another carry tonight for the workhorse Elliott. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. We well, you know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Prescott from the gun on third. Wide open receiver complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And a big third down conversion with a gain of 28. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, Charles, pretty big piece of news around the NFL on Monday the 22nd. Dallas Cowboys all to talk about them needing a big-time target out wide. They went and got Amari Cooper. The speculation was there. The discussion was there. But then late Monday, as you noted, it became real. The Cowboys decided they needed a WR1 and went to Oakland and got Amari Cooper and gave up their number one draft pick for 2019 in the turn. What do you think of the, the fit there? I think the fit is excellent. Dallas screaming for a wide receiver who can attract attention, stretch the field, and make big plays over the top. He can do all of that. He should help his quarterback, Dak Prescott, become an even better player. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. On third down, it's Prescott. Drops it underneath to Elliott. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry is a defense that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10, just shy of the 30. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Well, we got a second here, Charles. Let's look back to some of those crazy finishes in Week 7 of the NFL last week. I mean, it seemed like every game had a wild finish. It certainly did. Dallas-Washington, 
Brett Maher off the upright from 52 yards following a questionable penalty against his long snapper that moved the ball back five yards. How about Cleveland, Tampa Bay? Cleveland claws his way back in. And then Tampa Bay wins the ball game with Chandler Catanzaro kicking the big field goal from 59 yards in overtime. Remember, he missed a 40-yarder in regulation. Justin Tucker missed an extra point. That's the headlines in and of itself. His first miss in the NFL. And New Orleans gets away with a victory. And New England, Chicago. Chicago throws the Hail Mary at the end of the game. Kevin White, 54 yards. He needed 55. Yeah. Stopped at the one yard. I don't think I've ever seen a Hail Mary come that close but not get in. Mariota from the gun on third down. Dumps it off to Lewis. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Mariota now to throw on first down. Dancing to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Tyrone Crawford continuing to fight downfield. The big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now Lewis. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of two, now third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the gun, Mariota over the middle to Smith. They get 13, but it's not nearly enough. And it'll be fourth down. That's a good looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed, and pretty well executed there. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. This is Elliott, and he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the 9-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible because right now he is wrecking things for them. They go to Elliott again. 
And he will lose yardage here back to his own six. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Third and long for Prescott. Looking for Austin, intercepted. Picked up by the USC man, Adoree Jackson. And that interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. Here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. Second and goal from inside the five. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Can't afford another delay here as they come up again on second and goal. Now they'll run with Lewis. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal to go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. This is third and goal now. 80,000 on their feet here in Arlington. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Flushed out right. He may try and run for this. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. So with a fourth and goal looming, we hit the end of three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. and we'll begin it with a field goal try here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Suckup will put this one right through, and they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing, it's now 13 to three. 
A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Dak Prescott on the offense heading back onto the field, and he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Where Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Elliott, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And some room to work. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. 11 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. With it is Jackson. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt, and it'll be Titan football. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 21. <laughs> now Mariota. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. The Notre Dame man, Jalen Smith, able to get a hand in and knock it away. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. From the 21, it's second and 10. Three, two, 
A second down throw here for Mariota. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Taewon Taylor, and it's third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark it down at the 49. He got 29 yards that time. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. Mariota now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Again, it's Mariota. Going underneath for Lewis. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. And the Cowboys have recovered. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Now Dak Prescott and the offense heading back onto the field. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? And rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Prescott now after the fumble recovery. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. They'll run with Elliott. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The big man, Jarrell Casey, in on the stop. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Throwing. Prescott, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant it a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Out now comes the Cowboys punter, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept <laughs> using it. <laughs> They'll start off with a give to Lewis. And he 
was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Henry, and he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. A gain of a yard gets him back where they started. Now it's third and ten. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. On third down, that's Lewis. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards, first down. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down. So a little more space to work with here from the 13 on first and 10. First down, Mariota. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Play action now, Mariota. Caught right side, Davis. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. A pair of first downs gives them a first and 10 up at the 44. On first and 10, here's Mariota. Over the middle, complete. It's Smith. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. Mariota again. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. He lost two there, and it's third down. 
And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. They'll throw again. Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Looking deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Cowboys' defense is going to get him the football back. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 44. Prescott from the gun. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. fake here on first down and that's incomplete okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him mechanics might have been off maybe some fatigue that one came up short yeah fourth quarter maybe you do start to watch is the arm there the legs still there this has been a tough game here now is second and ten again from the 41 Here's Elliott, and an alley to run. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and ten. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. 
And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, fold over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Wesley Woodyard there on the tackle. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And the lead stretches, 16 to three now. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Smith. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, Mariota over the middle complete. It's Smith, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun, and that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play, and that'll make this a second and 13. 
throw it. Mariota. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Mariota. The open man is Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Mariota on first down. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a gain of five, and it'll make it a second down. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Smith. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver there was John o. Smith. And it's second down. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Throwing again, Mariota on second and 10. Goes underneath for Henry. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and they're going to have a third down. To the air again, Mariota, and he finds his target. It's sharp. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. down throw for Mariota. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Jeff Heath, the strong safety, able to get in there on the coverage. Try to get it all back with one big shot right there, but even if successful, that doesn't get them all the way back to where they need to be. Can't totally abandon throwing the ball underneath as well. From the 21, it's second and 10. On second down, Mariota again. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Sean Lee, the linebacker, able to get a hand in in coverage. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. One last shot now for Mariota. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. 
he was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.